Tinker students and welcome to the CoLab on Tinker Live. This is a show that helps students and teachers make and create with Tinker Code. I'm David Lockhart of Tinker. Now let's create together. And this week we will or today we will be making design a presentation with code. There's a lot you can do with this. I'm kind of super excited about this one. And to help me today is Miss Barnes. How are you, Miss Barnes? Hey, I'm great, Mr. Lockhart. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's been a while since you've been on the Code Lab, huh? Yes, it has. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back. I love this. <laughs> That's good. So kind of what we're going to do today is we're going to work on building a presentation with code, and then we're going to customize it a couple ways. And I think what's kind of key with this one is that you can kind of approach this one two different ways. I think what the one that you'll see Ms. Barnes do is kind of from a storytelling perspective, but I'll show you kind of how to turn it into a traditional presentation as well. And so, to, and as always, you can always chat with us at go tinker slash live chat. Now, one thing to remember, I've noticed in that Padlet wall, the last couple shows that we have some students you're trying to get your names on there. Unfortunately, we can't take your names. It's that student privacy stuff. Um, but definitely, we would love to hear from you and especially see your projects as you complete those. Now, to get started today, it's a super, super easy one. You just go to this link, go tinker slash slideshow. It's going to take you right to the project today. Um, and you go to that link and you can always sign into the account. You can, if you want to save it later, and I'll kind of touch on that um, in my little spiel, you can, you can sign into the project, but it's really easy to get there today. Just go to go tinker slash slideshow. So Miss Barnes, you ready to kind of share your screen? Let's do it. All right, go ahead and do that. And we, you are off and running. Are you ready to go? All right. So I'm just gonna start you guys off by, we're gonna walk through the tutorial. So this project, it actually starts by giving you some code blocks, telling you how to use them. So super easy to get started. So I hope you guys have joined me. Let's get going. So I'm just gonna start off with the very first uh, step of this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we are learning how to make a slideshow. We are gonna use multiple backgrounds. We're gonna switch backgrounds. We're gonna detect background changes. We're gonna move actors, animate actors. So there's really a lot that we're gonna end up learning how to do just in this one project. So let's get started. Switch the background. Okay, so the project uses a switch to background block to select the first background. Can you change the initial background? So I want you guys, if you are getting started, I want you to tell us in Tinker live chat what you're doing. But right now we're gonna use this uh, block right here, switch to background castle. So as you can see, it's already there for us. So on start, it's going to be the background of a castle. This project also uses next background blocks to change the background. So that's what we want to do. We don't want it to just be a castle the whole time. We want to change it. So what I'm going to need to do, so on start, switch background to castle. That's great. As you can see, let me make it a little bit bigger here for us to, there we go. So as you can see right here, I've got my castle, but I want to make sure that it changes. So I'm going to use this block right here, next background. Th those aren't pull those aren't pullable blocks out of those menus. They they've got to be have that draggable function in them. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the blocks in this project are already there for you. So it's it, it, so you can tweak some of the settings if you want. That'll work. So whenever we get through with the tutorial, you can just get started and make it your own, right? Oh yeah, we'll we'll show several ways to make it your own for sure. You get so technical. I can't wait to see what you can show us. I don't know about all that, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so right now we're going to talk about detecting background changes. So it's easy to time events to happen when the scene changes. So as you can see here, they gave us a new block. 
when background switches to in name. So as you can see, when the background switches, look at the blocks that we have right here. So whenever the background changes, the airship will move back to the left side of the screen. And that is what this code block is right here. So the propeller sound, we're gonna hear a propeller sound. And then as you can see right here, here are our blocks that's gonna make the airship move back to the left side of the screen. So it kind of shows you what order you need to have them and how it works. And then as soon as we get through with the tutorial, we will test these out. So Cody has move and wait blocks inside a forever loop. So he will forever move to the right. So as you can see right here, forever walk. And right here's the code that makes him do that. So when Cody reaches the right edge of the screen, he resets to the left edge. So right here. So great, he's walking, but how do we reset him? Right here. So if his position is this, then we need to move him over. And so all these blocks together, once you start them, and as we'll see here in just a second when we test them, that it's gonna actually make Cody move on the screen back and forth. Or now, once he reaches the right side, he'll move back to the left. Now remember, basically what it's doing is that it's, it's having him go all the way to the right side, and then when it changes background, it basically looks like he's walking through a bunch of different scenes. That's, and so we're gonna get to see that here in a second, yep, right? Yep, absolutely. Sweet. So let's go next. So animate actors. So if you have added an actor from the character builder, you can use animate blocks to animate them. So right here, animate walk. So as you can see here in our forever loop, that is how Cody is going to walk through these scenes is the animate walk. So it'll have him continuously because of our forever loop walk. So can you change the animation so Cody runs or jumps across the screen? So I'm curious in our Tinker live chat, what would I need to change? So right now we've got animate walk, but how could I make him jump across the screen? I would love to hear ideas. Let's see here. Let's see what options we got. Oh, looky here. Jump, run, walk. So there's all kinds of things that we could end up making Cody do as he's going across the screen. If we don't want him to just walk, let's have him jump. So you can take this and make it your own. So go through and, um, you know, maybe we want him to run across the screen and not walk. We want Cody to go fast. So there's all kinds of things that you can do to make this your own. So add more to the slideshow. What else does the slideshow need? So right now we have, we have to wear our airship will move. We have to where Cody will walk throughout the scene. So let's see what it looks like here. Whoop. On to the next background. What's going to happen? There we go. So all of these blocks we put together, we actually just created a slideshow. So what kind of things could you use this slideshow project for? What could Cody walk through? Where could Cody go? What can you guys do with it? So I'd love to know. And then David's gonna jump in now that we're done with the tutorial and he's gonna show us some more technical things that we can do and make this super exciting for you guys. I don't know how technical. Um, if you could go ahead and stop sharing your screen Absolutely. and then we will flip over to here. All right, so really when I look at this project, I think of it in kind of two different realms. Number one, the one that we kind of the base tutorial that we have can do it from a storytelling perspective that you can actually have Cody kind of move through scenes and tell a story. So the first thing that I came up, I thought of when I saw this is, can I have Cody interact with somebody else? Can I have him interact in a scene and have it be that person be in a specific scene? So I'm gonna go to add actor and I'm actually gonna add a different actor to this. So I'm gonna go and we'll just use the media library. I don't know if for some reason I've liked the superhero actors lately. So we're just gonna add superhero actor to this. We'll add him, add him in here. I need to stop this project so I can actually edit him. <laughs> and so with the superhero actor, kind of what I want him to do, the whole goal here is that I want Cody to walk 
through the scenes but then when he sees the superhero actor he's gonna stop and do a dance break now the key is is that cody actually does not have a dance animation in him or as part of his but you could tweak that actor one of the real keys with kind of the, getting a lot of the animations and getting a lot of animations and options is if you come up here to this character builder, you can actually build characters that come with tons of different options. So like, for instance, if I add the little football player and I can change his arms, I can change his head, I can change all those kinds of things. But when I add the little football guy, if you kind of edit him, uh, actually not that, that's not what I wanted. If I go to the little pinwheel, you can see he has all different kinds of costumes and animations and all different kinds of things that you can do. They just go on and on and on forever. But I'm gonna get rid of him for right now and we're gonna use Cody and we're gonna kinda use jump as a dance, so that's fine. But the first key is I want the superhero to stay, um, I want him only to come up on one scene. And so there's a really easy way to do that is that you can use show and hide. So if I come down to start, I'm going to use an on start event block and then I'm going to hide him because I want him to only show up on that scene and he's not going to show up on the first scene. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add hide. But now the key is I want him to actually show up on a specific scene. So I'm going to go and go back to my events and you have this event block down here called when background switches to. So if I go to when background switches to, we'll just say beach. And then I can go and I just add a show block here and I can have him show up on that specific scene. So if I go here, I have big Cody. I, I was playing earlier, so it's big Cody. I probably should put him in the desert. We'll put this in the desert next time to make it a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see if he'll show up since I switched it. Oh, I switched it so he didn't show. I was trying to switch it so that we didn't have to wait to go through every scene. Let's see if he'll show up here. And there he is. All right, so now we have him show up on that specific scene. So that's a good thing. But now we want Cody to actually interact with him. And so the idea is that I'm gonna have Cody, when he touches the superhero, that's when he's gonna stop and do his thing. He's gonna do his little dance. And so really I need to do two things here. I need to have him do change his animation and have a certain animation when he touches that superhero. That's kind of the first step. And so I'm gonna go back to my events and I'm gonna use when this, this when false occurs block because I can actually change that value of false. And so I can sit there and say, all right, I'm gonna go and I can go to, there's a touching block there's a touching variable that I can add in there. And then I can, it says touching mouse pointer, but I can change that value and I can change that value to Cody. And so we can actually cha change it to self. That's, and actually, no, we don't wanna do that. We want him to touch the superhero. That's when he's gonna go and do his thing. And so then we're gonna have him animate too. So we're gonna go get an animate block for him and we're gonna have him jump um, when he does that. And actually, I'm gonna make him jump more than once. So I'm also gonna add a forever loop as well. So we'll add a forever loop in here. Uh, and then we'll pump that in there. And so now when he touches the superhero, he should start jumping, but he's not gonna stop walking. I may take the propeller sound effect out for now. <laughs> Oh, he worked earlier doing that. I don't... Interesting. So now he's... He worked earlier doing that, so I, I'm not sure what's... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's an interesting one. All right. So the other way that you can do that, and he did work earlier doing that, and I'm not sure what's going on there, is you can actually get him to stop walking as well. Because what I can do is I can add an if block into this forever loop. So I can go and say, all right, if... And then what I wanna do is I'm just gonna add it into the forever loop. And is I want him to stop walking when he actually touches that superhero. So I'm gonna to go touch. I'm gonna to add that block in just like I did over here. We're gonna change this to the superhero. 
And then I'm gonna add a um, stop block in here. So you have a stop block that you can use to kind of stop other actions. And so I'm gonna add that stop block in here, but I don't want him to stop with all. I just want him to stop with this script. So he's gonna stop this action just to do that. And let's see if he'll actually do it. It may be Cody's, let me adjust Cody's size. Let me adjust Cody a little bit. It may be his size, I think. And I adjust. He might be too big and let's put this let's layer this up to the front and let's see if we can get him to do it okay those touching kind of actions are always some of the hardest um just because you got to kind of hit it right there he goes hey he was too big so now he's just jumping he's dancing now the other thing that we could do is we could actually have that superhero talk to him and so we're just going to come down here to i always forget where it is i think it's in look the speech bubbles yeah it's in look and i'm going to have him say i'm going to have when he's going to say dance break so i'm going to say dance break but it's going to take a sec so if i do it the what you'll see is that if i go here And Cody walks through him. Now he's gonna say it. Now he's gonna say it as soon as he gets there. I want to kind of time it a little bit so I can always add a wait block in here, and we can actually just play with the time here and time this a little bit. So we'll just say we'll just say one second for now, and you can always adjust that as you go. But the whole key here is you're changing scenes and you're telling a story. And having these interact interact with other characters but another key here is that you can actually have this be a presentation just a straight up like traditional presentation as well and so what you could do is if I come to add actor I can actually come in and upload actors in here so I could upload an actor in here I have um, I pulled and I, I this is the presentation in our stem projects it's a Gandhi presentation so I pulled a picture of Gandhi in here and so the idea would be, can I have Gandhi just show up on that one slide? And so we'll say, Cody will still walk across, but we would say something to the effect of, I wanna have Gandhi show up. So we're gonna go um, on start and we're gonna go hide. And then we're gonna go, and then we'll do the um, next back, the background slide. So when background switches to, we'll just say beach for now. And then we're gonna go show and so the idea is you can actually code this presentation out because I can upload those other pictures but I can also upload text actors and so I can actually just have this be we'll just say hello for now sure I can have this actually be a traditional presentation where I'm actually coding the transitions here and so you can do it that way as well and really that makes it a place where any class can go any school can go anybody can use it and for teachers out there, there's actually a STEM project that does this. It's, it's a social studies project. Um, I think it's in the third through fifth social studies STEM lessons, if I'm not mistaken. But it's one that you can actually pull and you can use with any content because it's a presentation. Like you can tweak it for any content. And I think the key with presentations always is who's the audience? Like you see a lot of teachers and students out there, both of you guys, you see a lot of times it's like, okay, let's do a presentation on George Washington imagine an audience and you can get a lot more out of it and you can either do a story or you can actually do a presentation so either way really works and so that's kind of some tweaks there let's kind of jump over and see if there's any questions in the chat let me kind of flip over to my chat real quick got so many screens up so and i had great the great suspender on so i have to let it load for a second <laughs> Come on. We've got some people saying hi, but let's is, see. Any questions? Is it back to the every everybody saying hi? Yeah. That chat, man. Everybody hi. wants to say hi. Hi, everybody in the chat. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. So if there's if there's no questions, definitely put go and play with this project. I think there's a lot you can get out of it and a lot you can do with it. Um, and you can tweak it all different kinds of ways. And I think these are some of my favorite projects in Tinker, the ones that you can just tweak like a hundred different ways and really get a lot of that ceiling out of it and that creative ceiling out of it.
But if there's no questions, that means we can talk about the next, the kind of, can I go over the touching system again, please? Absolutely. So really when you look at touching, so what we did is we added a event block. And so we added event block where you don't have to set the value to true. So when you add the event block here, will you see this when false occurs? you can actually change that value with other variables. And that's how we did the touching. So we did, if you touch, there's actually a touching block then here, and it's a sensing block. If you're looking to find it in the categories, it's in sensing. There's a touching block in here, and you can actually set the value to touch that thing, touch that person. It doesn't have to be set to true or false. You can actually just set it to touching that character. You can set it to touching um, the edges. You can set it to touching whatever you want um, that way. So, and you can have that interaction when it touches with the characters. Now, you saw kind of a struggle that I had with it is that you have to play with the sizing a little bit sometimes um, to kind of get that to work. But that definitely does work really well because now if Cody actually does, when I played with Cody's size, he does his little dance as soon as he touches that superhero because hey, he was a little too big. And so now he's going to dance and he does his little dance. And again, if you wanted it to be an actor who had more animations to him, use that character builder because that character builder, those actors have tons and tons of animations. So great question. And so talking about the next show, you can never miss a show um, if you go to gotinker slash add code lab. Um, never miss a show. We would love to see um, we would love to see you on all our shows and kind of see kind of the projects that we're doing. I know tomorrow we're doing the Lunar Gateway, I believe. I, I think I'm the guest, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and my friend Mr. Rezac is the host. Our next show, again, is tomorrow at 2 p.m. Same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, that leaves us with some thank yous. Ms. Barnes, thanks for being on the show with me today. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I love being able to code and see what we can do and be able to make it our own. Absolutely. And I, this is a fun project too. And um, I have, let me make sure I get the right thing here. That's going to do it for us today on Code Lab. Thanks again to you. Remember, let's create together at tinker.com and share your projects with us in the chat.